All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at a methodology for finding the center mass and moments for a two-dimensional region. Uh, the example we're looking at says find the center of mass and moments of inertia for the part of a disk in the first quadrant. Disk has a radius 2, centered at the origin, and density rho as a function of x and y equal to 2 times x squared plus y squared. So in step one of the methodology, we want to describe the region and graph it. Um, we may be given a graph and you need a description. You may um, be just given a description in words like we are here. We want a graph. And I would really like to know um, some inequalities that would describe the boundary for the region. Uh, so uh, disk is just the, the circle, but with the interior included. Um, and so we go to Desmos to do like a 2D graph. Normal unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, radius 2, we'd put a 4 here. To make it a disk, we use a less than or equal. Um, now, to have this be just the part in the first quadrant, I think we need to use Desmos' ability to restrict domains. Um, but I think that means we need to define it as a function. Um, so solving for y, uh, you'd really get two functions, right? Plus or minus square root of four minus x squared. Again, uh, less than or equal would get the shaded area below. We want above the x-axis, so let's do zero as less than or equal. And then we just restrict the domain for x. Um, and so we use the curly braces, put in the inequality that restricts x, and then a colon. And that gives us the first part of the disk, or the part of the disk in quadrant one. And then we can. Grab a measure that. Um, so we could describe this with rec uh, inequalities for the rectangular coordinates x and y. Um, but honestly, I think it'd be more helpful to have this recognized as a polar rectangle, right? And Uh, in polar coordinates, uh, we would have that uh, r is between 0 and 2, and theta is between 0 and pi over 2. So, it suggests when we go to these integrals, uh, we'll be doing polar coordinate integrals. And in step two, we do the first one, which is finding the total mass, integrating the density function over the area. So we'll put in the density function two times quantity x squared plus y squared. And then shifting to polar coordinates, uh, x squared plus y squared is r squared. Uh, and then we'd have an r dr d theta for the polar integration, integrating r first, that would go from zero to two, and then theta second from zero to two pi. All right, so including this r, it's actually, 2r cubed. 
And if we do the first integral integrating with respect to R, the antiderivative is uh, two over four or one half R to the fourth. We still need to do the theta integration. Uh, evaluating that at two, two to the fourth is uh, 16. Half of that is, wait, two to the fourth, two, four, eight, yeah, 16. Uh, half of that is eight. And then the integral from zero. Oh, I don't know why I had two pi here. These are not pi, they're pi over two. Zero to pi over two of eight theta. So antiderivative is eight theta. And evaluating that at pi over two, we get eight times pi over two, which is four pi. So four pi is the mass. Now we can find the moments about the x and y axes. And for the moment about the x-axis, we would do a double integral over the same region, um, but multiply the density function by y. Uh, and then for the moment about the y-axis, multiply the density function by x. All right, so a moment, the x-axis. We would replace y with um, the polar equivalent, which is r sine theta, and then x will be r cosine theta. So you still have the there's the r sine theta, y, and then rho, we don't need to convert that again. We know that was 2r squared, and then r dr d theta. So we have the 2r cubed from rho and r that's part of dr d theta, and then there's another r from the y, and so we get 2r to the fourth sine theta dr theta. And it's the same limits of integration. All right, so if we integrate with respect to r, we get 2 fifths r to the 5 from 0 to 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. Um, and then times two is 64, so we get 64 fifths. Oh, there's a sine theta there still. Got the sine theta. So 64 over 5, and then sine theta, theta. So when you integrate sine theta with respect to theta, we get negative cosine theta. Um, evaluating that at pi over 2 is 0, minus the value at 0, which is 1. Um, and so you end up just getting 1 from that, and this just gives you 64. So the moment about the x-axis is 64 fits.
do the moment about the y-axis now. So we have the same double integral, but we're multiplying by x. Again, that's going to be our cosine theta. And then rho is 2r squared. And then we have r dr d theta. So we get 2r to the fourth cosine theta dr d theta. That theta integrals still zero to pi over two. And that R integral is zero to two uh, comes out the same way because the R part is the same, two R to the fourth. So again, we get two fifths R fifth, uh, but now we have a cosine theta there. So that'll still give us 64 over 5, but now 64 over 5 times cosine theta. All right, integral cosine is sine. Sine of pi over 2 is 1 minus sine of 0 is 0. So you can get 64 over 5 times 1 or 64 over 5. So the moments about the x and y axes are both 64 fifths. They are the same. At this point, you can calculate the center of mass. If you take the moments from step three and you divide by each of them by the mass from step two, they give you the coordinates. Notice that it's the moment about the y-axis divided by the mass that gives you the x-coordinate for the center of mass, and the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass that gives you the y-coordinate for the center of mass. And we use x and y with a bar on top to denote so x bar is my over m. And we have all that stuff there. So 64 over 5 for the moment about the y-axis divided by 4 pi gives you 16 over 5 pi about 1.0186. And you get the same thing for the y coordinate because the moments were the same. But in general, those will be different if the moments are different. So the coordinates themselves, 16 over 5 pi, 16 over 5 pi. It's the coordinates of the center of mass. What we can do is we can go back to our graph and we can add that in. We just list the coordinates separated by a comma. You can even have a label put on there. For that image. All right. Uh, finally, we want to get the moments of inertia. So we've got moments of inertia about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. For that. Again, our density function in terms of rho and theta was just two or r and theta is two r squared. So let's do the moment about the x-axis, uh, capital I subscript x. So these integrals are of the same region, so the limits of integration are the same. 0 to pi over 2, 
zero to two. Uh, but now we've got a y squared. Remember, y is r sine theta. So we'll just square that, get r squared sine squared theta. That's the y squared. And then we have rho, which is 2r squared. And then the dA, right, is r dr d theta. All right, so simplifying the integrand. Uh, we've got r squared, r squared, r, that's 2r to the fifth. That r exponent just keeps increasing on us. And sine squared theta. So this time when we do the r integration, we go to 2r to the 6th over 6. It's like I put a pi over 6 there because I was saying 6. All right, and we put in 2. Um, two to the sixth there would be um, 64, right? Check that, two to the sixth. Yeah, 64. Uh, and then this two thirds, or sorry, this two sixths is just a one third. So 64 over three sine squared theta. All right, so now we integrate uh, sine squared, we need to call back on that. Formula. Remember, we would derive that cosine of two theta. Room to do it there, isn't it? Uh, we want sine squared, so we'll substitute in for cosine squared. And then just solving that for sine squared. We can have this 64 over thirds here, and then 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 theta. We're then ready to get the antiderivative. So the 1 half theta plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta. Evaluated at 0 and pi over 2. Uh, putting in 0 will give us 0, right, for both terms. So really just interested in pi over 2. Um, 1 half pi over 2 would be pi over 4. And then the sine part, sine of 2 theta, would be 2 sine of 2 times pi over 2, or sine of pi which is also zero. So the only part of this that's not zero 
is when you get the one half theta evaluated at pi over two, um, giving you pi over four. So 64 over three times pi over four, um, and that would be 16, right? 16 pi over three. All right, we're going to repeat the similar calculation will be the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So this time we're going to do x squared and x is our cosine theta. So squaring that, we get r squared cosine squared theta. There's the x squared part. Um, rho is the same to r squared and the dA is the same r dr d theta. All right, simplifying that integrand comes out pretty similar to the other one. Get two r to the fifth but this time we have a cosine squared. Antiderivative with respect to R. That's going to be 2 over 6, which we now know is just 1 third. 6. Evaluated R equals 0 and R equals 2. The only non-zero contribution is when r is 2. 2 to the 6th is 64. So we again get 64 over 3 cosine squared theta. So we want to adjust this formula. And It's like I might have had a mistake in the previous one. I think the previous one was one half minus. Um, and it didn't affect our final result because the the part where I had the cosine didn't have any non-zero contribution. Uh, that should have been one half theta minus one fourth sine two theta. So I had a sign mistake in that previous one. Sorry about that. It's correct in the document. All right, so let's substitute in that formula. And then antiderivative. Not four theta, two theta. 
two. So again, when theta is zero, both terms are zero. When theta is pi over two, the sine is still zero. So this comes out exactly the same. 64 over three times pi over four or 16 pi over three. Now there's also this moment of inertia about the origin where you just add the moments about the x and y axes together. So for us, I subscript zero or O moment about the origin um, would be 16 pi over three from the moment about the x-axis, 16 pi over three moment about the y-axis and you get 32 pi, 32 pi over three for the moment about the origin. My high school calculus teacher told me that 32 pi over three was the most frequently occurring answer in calculus problems. So we went to go take the AP test. If you didn't know what the answer was, just put 32 thirds pi. All right, all this leaves is the validation and What we can do is for the center of mass coordinates, we can find the centroid. Uh, I have the formulas for the coordinates of the centroid there. Um, if it's a, a known geometric shape, like a full disk or a square rectangle, you may be able to find the centroid easier. The centroid is just the geometric center. Um, and then you look for the deviation from that centroid uh, to be justified by a non-uniform density. So let's do that. So for the x-coordinate of the centroid, you can see we have one over a, so a is the area of this. Um, the area of the disk, the interior of a circle, uh, in general is pi r squared, um, but we're using a quarter of a disk, and so it'd be one fourth pi r squared. And the radius was two, uh, and so it's actually just an area of pi for our region. And then you just integrate x over this region. We would do still do polar coordinates. So x is r cosine theta, and then it's r dr d theta. So with the inner integral, we've got an r squared. Trying to think of if we've already done that integral. I mean, we did a 2r squared, but it didn't have a cosine, so we haven't done this exact integral yet. Integrate uh, antiderivative for r there would be r cubed over three or yeah, one third r cubed. Uh, and if we just evaluate it at two, we get eight thirds cosine theta. Uh, and then the antiderivative for cosine is sine. And sine at pi over two is one minus sine of zero, zero. And so you just get eight, three. Now we had a one over pi that I carelessly lost track of. It's in front of the whole thing.
So we get eight over three pi. The y coordinate of the centroid comes out the same um, in case it wasn't obvious from the shape. Uh, the difference is that we would have a y in our integration. And so we'd have our sine theta. And so we get sine theta here, here. And then our antiderivative would be negative cosine theta. So cosine at pi over two is zero, minus cosine at zero is one. And so minus minus one comes out the same way. So the, the centroid is eight over three pi for both X and Y coordinates. So let's plot that and then make sense of that because that's not the same as our center of mass, right? All right, so this purple dot, the one that's closer to the origin is the geometric center. If this two-dimensional region had a uniform density, then the centroid would be the center of mass. And you might've done problems like that in Calc 2 um, because that's all you can do with a, a single integral. Um, and what we're seeing is the Actual center of mass is further from the origin, right? Green point. So we want to make sense of that, and the reason is the density. So the density is 2x squared plus y squared, which we know is 2r squared. And so as you go away from the origin, right, like in the R direction, it becomes more dense. And so you have more mass out here than you do in here. Um, and that extra mass due to the increased density um, shifts the center of mass from the centroid towards the outer edge there. So that's the justification, right? And so that is a rough validation. I mean, we don't know how much it's supposed to shift, but we know it's supposed to shift in that direction and in that direction only, right? There's no saying that it should shift in the X or Y direction. It's got to shift just in R because the density only depends on R. So that's, that's a form of validating it. Um, and that's the best I could think of, validating the center of mass. So find the centroid and then uh, use the density to explain why the center of mass is different, how it, how it moves. Now you notice step five was kind of independent of step four, right? We just kind of found these other moments of inertia. Um, the way to validate the moments of inertia is to calculate the radii of gyration. So the radii of gyration take the moments of inertia and divide by the mass and then take the square root. So let's calculate those and then make sense of them. So the radii of gyration about the x-axis is the square root of the moment of inertia about the x-axis divided by the mass. 
moment of inertia about the x-axis was 16 pi over 3. And then the mass was 4 pi. So pi's cancel. 4 and 16 gives you a 4. And you're left with square root of 4 thirds. The rate I of gyration about the y-axis is the same because the only difference is that you have a moment of inertia about the y-axis. Um, but that was also 16 pi over 3. So the way I understand these radii is you go this distance from that axis, um, and it, it sort of operates like if you were rotating around that axis, um, this ends up being kind of like a center of mass uh, distance from the axis for this region. Um, so I don't know exactly where it's supposed to be, but I don't think it should be outside the region itself, right? And so you kind of look and make sure that it's within the region. Again, this won't necessarily catch all your mistakes, but it's something. So if we go to graph again, and then we put one for the y-axis. And this is actually the rate of gyration for the y-axis. So you're thinking of a radius from the y-axis. So we're rotating around the y-axis. And then this is that radius. Uh, that this region rotating around the y-axis uh, could be modeled by some mass right on that radii also spinning around the axis. So you see, this isn't going to match up with the center of mass, um, but that it it should be somewhere in the middle of the region. It can't be outside of it. It should also probably follow the same principles as the, the argument before with the centroid that um, if the density is not uniform um, and say the density is increasing here as we get further away from the origin, um, then we'd expect the rate of gyration to be further from the origin than the centroid. Uh, and we can easily switch this over to a radii of gyration about the x-axis. So now think of rotating around the x-axis, and this is your radii of gyration. So those look about right um, based on what we know about these concepts. All right. Um, that wraps up the center of mass and moments of inertia methodology. See you next one.